So why study scientific illustration? Because it's f***ing awesome. Hello, friends. Welcome to my class. <laughs> why? Why study scientific illustration? Why? Most of us come from scientific backgrounds. Most of the people in this class are from scientific backgrounds. So why study a class that's both art and science? This class, this class is both art, both art and science. And art and science have different rules. In art, there are no rules. None, there are no rules. There are no rules in art. Picasso says, The best artist copy, great artist steal. Could you imagine hearing that as a scientist? Could you imagine hearing somebody say, Good scientist copy, the best scientist steal. No, okay, they have different rules. Art and science have completely different rules, okay? Like I said, in art there are no rules. In science, there are unbreakable rules. You break these rules and you die. die. You break these rules and you lose your job. Plagiarism. Bad. Oh my God, spelled this correctly. Plagiarism. Bad. Plagiarism. Bad. Falsifying data. Bad. Falsifying data. Bad. Unbreakable rules of science, okay? So art and science have completely different philosophical views on life. Sometimes art is designed to provoke us. So here's a etching by Otto Dix. This is a... Maybe this is too controversial. Hmm. Sometimes art is designed to make us feel angry, to make us feel emotion. Whereas science is designed to inform us. Science is to teach us truth, to help us put our finger on truth. But creativity is required for science. Creativity is required for science. Often we have to deviate from the protocol. Sometimes copying is required for us to learn. Sometimes copying is practice. The rules aren't always clear. I think it's fair to say we must present data truthfully and we must communicate data effectively. This is where we have room for creativity. This is where skills in digital literacy will amplify our success. I fundamentally believe, I fundamentally believe in life that style points count. Style points count. Making things look really good matters. Making things presented in the most effective way to communicate your hypothesis matters. That's what I want to focus on in this class. I want to develop your skills so thoroughly that this is never an issue for you for the rest of your life. So why study scientific illustration? Why study scientific illustration when photographs today why study scientific illustration when photographs today are so good?
And it's true. Photography today is so amazingly accurate. But oftentimes when we're communicating science, sometimes we need to abstract. Sometimes we need to emphasize. Sometimes we need to change the display, change the frame. There are things we can do with scientific illustration that cannot be visually communicated by a photograph. Sometimes what we want to communicate cannot be conveyed by photography. Sometimes we need to abstract the essence of what we're trying to say and visually display it. Sometimes we're trying to make disparate pieces or ideas of data converge together in a pleasing figure. So why study scientific illustration? I fundamentally believe that we can increase the impact of our publications. We can increase the likelihood of being funded in terms of our grants. We can increase collaborations. This is because when you have great figures, people will start contacting you and they'll say, hey, can you help me make a figure with this? But it goes, it goes much beyond that. It goes further beyond that. We can use our skills to recruit. We can use our skills to inspire. And we can use our skills to communicate science. So why learn to draw? So why learn to draw? So in Emerson's nature essay, Ralph Waldo Emerson, he discusses how just visually looking and encountering nature, visually looking and studying nature with sight allows us to gain insights into the functionality. So effect effectively what he's saying is morphology dictates function. And when you draw something, when you learn to draw a structure, you understand that structure better than any other way could help you learn that. Hmm. No, I didn't say that right. You learn more about that structure through drawing than any other mechanism of learning. Drawing rewires your brain and forces you to memorize morphology in a way that just looking at things with just quickly, quickly glancing with your eye would not allow you to. Drawing forces you to look, relook, analyze, correct, erase, and memorize structural morphology. If you can draw something, you know it better than anybody else on the planet. Steve Jobs said that. So in this class, I want to develop your eye. I want to develop your visual ethics. I want to develop your aesthetic style. And I want to develop and amplify your potential through, for scientific communication. Okay, so let me talk about how this class is organized. There are four projects. Three projects if you are an undergraduate. Four projects if you are a graduate student. Project one. Project one, a black and white drawing. Project one, a black and white drawing. Project one, a black and white drawing. Project two, a color Photoshop painting. 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 Project three, A color illustrator vector image. Project three, a color illustrator vector image. Project three, a color vector. <laughs> Project three, a color illustrator vector image. You get the point. Project four, for graduate students, anything pertaining to your thesis. Project four for graduate students, anything relating to your thesis. 
Project four for graduate students. Anything relating to your thesis. These are all examples. Good luck. <laughs> Project four for graduate students. Anything relating to your thesis. These projects will be presented through critique. So if you've never had an art class before, many of you are from science backgrounds, if you've never had an art class, a studio art class, the way that these works is your entire grade is based on these four or three projects, okay? You will spend your time in the studio class working on your projects. I am here to help you succeed in making those projects. When they're finished, there will be a deadline and we will all present our projects to everybody else in the class and everybody in the class will participate in a joint critique of your project where we will critically analyze where we will critically analyze the things you did right and the things you did wrong. And along the way, throughout the journey of this class, we will have weekly challenges. So these are like project runway type exercises where I issue a challenge that will be due at the end of the week, which is specifically designed to help develop a particular skill. And there will also be weekly snippet videos on scientific communication and ethics. There will also be weekly snippet videos on scientific communication and ethics. So why study scientific illustration? Because it's f***ing awesome. <laughs> <Good luck. laughs>